my AP staffs. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day um, or evening or morning. Um, we are starting chapter one, section one of the practice of statistics. Um, and I have like this split up into two days. I have one, 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 and then I also have one, one, two. Um, but I think, I mean, they go together really well. So depending on the time frame of the video, I might do two in one video, but we'll see what happens when we get there. Um, okay. So, um, we're going to talk about data different types of data that that exist in the world and then like how to deal with it um, and that's and how to display it how to analyze it um, at the very basic level uh, so that's chapter one and basically what it's about but um, we're gonna start with categorical data um, and so in this lesson we're gonna talk about how to display and analyze categorical data um, and also what it is, because you probably don't know what it is yet because we haven't talked about it. So, um, first uh, is um, the individuals are the objects described by a set of data. Uh, it can be anything, not just people. Um, and then the variables of interest are the, any characteristic um, that we're interested in studying. So, like, if I'm studying grade point averages of people at Dawson, um, the, the individuals are the students at Dawson, and um, the variables would be, or the variable would be at the GPA. We have two different types of um, variables. There are quantitative variables, and there are categorical variables. Um, if you can't tell by their names, uh, quantitative variables are basically like numbers and categorical variables are like categories, like things that can't be numerical or measured in numerical way. Um, so for example, like a quantitative variable would be your GPA, a categorical variable would be your hair color. Um, yeah, so that's the difference between the two. Today we're going to focus on categorical variables, but there's a difference between the two, and those are the two different types of data that we talk about that really exist in the world. I don't know if there's anything in the middle. It's either or. Okay, I just threw a couple of other examples up there. Other quantitative variables are like test score, length, height, width, etc. Um, and some categorical variables are like race, religion, um, and then some that like are important to mention are zip code and area code, because both of those are numbers, but they're not, you can't measure them, right? You can't like, I don't know, take the mean of them or find the median zip code. Like it doesn't make any sense. Um, it is in fact a category. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, so we're going to look today at like, all things about categorical variables. So um, we don't measure, I feel like we spend a lot more time talking about quantitative variables than categorical, um, but in the second half of the semester, we'll talk about them frequently. Um, and you need to be able to answer the question, what kind of data is it? Um, what kind of variable are you studying? And if you cannot answer that question, um, you will do the wrong test <laughs> or you will have trouble doing the wrong test. So as simple as it seems today, uh, it is something that's important for later. Um, so there's a couple different ways to measure categorical data. Um, sometimes it's in uh, counts. We can measure um, frequency, which is the same thing as counts, um, relative frequency, which is percents um, and proportions. Um, and then there's also something called uh, cumulative relative frequency, which I'll, I'll talk about um, later. Uh, and then um, how do we display categorical data? Um, we have bar graphs and pie charts, and there's something called a two-way table, which we're going to talk about as well, um, all of which are totally fine for categorical data. Okay. So there you have it, uh, counts, which are the same thing as frequency. Um, and basically you might have a table that has like, you know, all the different hair colors 
that you're looking for and then the number of people in your study that have that type of hair color. It's kind of like a tally sheet. Um, but instead of tallies, like you actually have the counts. Um, and then proportions or percents and you just, or which is also the same thing as relative frequency. And so you just find the percent of the total um, that you have. Um, and then uh, display with bar graphs and pie charts um, and two-way tables, which we're going to talk about later. Um, okay, so here are some examples of pie charts and bar graphs. Um, and the question is asking about, it might be a little fuzzy here, but um, there are two different radio stations, or there are two different displays of the same data. Um, and I would imagine you've all seen pie charts before, but um, you have like, you know, 14.9% of uh, the radio stations have a country format. Um, and so 14.9% of the area should go to that slide, that slice. Um, and so it should be proportionate to the area of the circle, which is, should be 100% of the data. So if any time you have a, um, a pie chart that does not add up to 100%, then it's not the right kind of <laughs> pie chart because um, it's like bad data um, and bad numbers because um, the pie ch chart should show you the entire picture. So if you only have some of the categories or you have some categories that overlap, um, like, I don't know, maybe you count um, adult standards and adult contemporary um, some of those stations are like counted as the same thing and so they overlap a little bit. Um, like that would not be okay to display in a pie chart. Um, and then you could also display the data in um, bar graphs. Um, and one may work better than the other depending on the, um, the data that you have. And in this case, um, it's kind of an opinion thing, but like which of the following graphs represent, best represent the data and why. Um, so take a look and see which one you prefer. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but the important thing is that bar graphs, um, order doesn't matter. Um, so obviously, like, they've put them in uh, alphabetical order here, but it's not important for the data. So, like, we could switch up the order, and it doesn't really matter um, which one goes first. So, um because it's categorical data. And then up here on the y-axis, you have the counts or the percent, uh, depending on what you're measuring. Um, I highly recommend that you almost always do percentages because if you do counts um, and your total, you know, things that you studied is not, like, proportionate, like, you can't really tell very well... Um, you can't like conclude a lot with just counts. So you kind of want to change everything that you have in terms of counts into proportions um, or percents. Um, so, you know, you can take a look. Um, those are more opinion questions than anything, but yeah. Um, also, we're going to be doing histograms later, which looks similar to bar graphs, but they're for quantitative data. Um, and the difference between bar graphs and histograms, long story short, is that bar graphs have spaces in between the bars most of the time. Histograms do not most of the time. Um, and uh, like I said, um, histograms are quantitative data and bar graphs are categorical. Okay, so it turns out we do have the time to do both in 111. So this is still 111, which is awesome. Um, we're just going to talk about two-way tables, which are pretty simple, um, but the conditional marginal distribution gets confusing. So, um, okay, a two-way table basically has two different categorical variables. Um, I guess you could introduce a um, quantitative variable as well in a two-way table. That would be fine. Um, but uh, I have an example of one below where we have um, your likelihood on one side of um, having a, I guess um, I should change that to significant other by the end of the week, um, and then have 
uh, the different sexes, male and female, and then your totals. So, um, yeah, that's an example of a two-way table. And inside are either counts or percentages and proportions. Um, in this case, I just gave you counts uh, so that you can do some calculations for examples. More often than not, you uh, want to include your totals in there, so I'll have you fill those out later. Um, but what's important about the two-way table is that this entry is the group of people who have absolutely no chance of being in a relationship by the end of the week and who are male. So there's no overlap. So what's really important there is that you like make sure that you have counted uh, appropriately and separated the data according, uh, according to, you know, the way that it's split up. Um, so this, this would mean that like 33 males and 41 females have absolutely no chance of having a significant other by the end of the week. Um, and then, uh, if you add up all of the male numbers, you would get the total number of males who are in the study. Add all of these up, you'd get the total number of females in the study. Um, if you add it across, that would get you the total number of people who had absolutely no chance. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that's, a, I guess, an important piece of the <laughs> puzzle there. Okay, so the four-step process is a process that we don't really use a whole lot right now, but it's introduced in the book now, so I have to kind of bring it up. Um, but we'll use it a ton when we're doing, um, in, the, in the second half, half of the class the second semester uh, with hypothesis testing and um, confidence intervals and everything um, and basically it's just a way to organize your thoughts for stats um, you want to state what you're gonna do you want to plan um, basically like what do you need in order to like perform this study correctly um, do actually do the work and calculations and then conclude um, make conclusions based on the data um, always has to be in context. If you ever conclude something out of context, I mean, you just tell me like fail or no, um, that you will not get full credit because you have to answer things in context because context is really important in stats. Okay, so marginal distribution is the distribution of values across one variable. So you pick one of the two variables in, in a table among all of the individuals in the data set. And so basically, for example, um, if you were to add up all of the males and females, you would get 50 males and 100, and, or, and 100 females for a total of 150 people in the study. So if I wanted to know um, the total, um, the marginal distribution for, for sex within the study, um, is either 33% uh, male and 67% 67, 67 female, or you could do like a third and two thirds um, as well. Either one would be fine, but you're basically looking like um, at how many of the total number of people in there were male and how many were female. So you're only looking at one specific um, variable, you're not looking at the second variable. Um, conditional distribution on the other hand holds you're looking at among a single variable, what's the distribution of the other variable? So for example, among males, what's the distribution of the likelihood of having a, a significant other by the end of the week? Um, or of all the people who are almost certain what percent were female and what, were, what percent were male? Um, and so you're looking like within one single row kind of the distribution. So like the total for a conditional distribution would be the total of the row or the total of the column, depending on what the variable is you're interested in. So there you go. Um, and my percentages just came from 41 out of 100. So I'm only looking at my total females. Okay, here are the examples. Give them a try. I will give you the answers. I don't have a lot of time to explain them, but that's cool. You'll get them. It's not that bad. Okay, so number one, we did earlier, uh, so that's there. Two um, is a marginal distribution of opinions, so it's the total number who had that opinion over the total total. Um, and then I have a graphical display there. 
And here are the answers for the rest of it. <laughs>